What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Former News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. I must go. And before we continue, if you would hit that subscribe button and that bell, you'd be notified on all the latest and greatest news in the world of anime, manga, politics, so on and so forth. I got you covered. And first, story on the docket. Now, it's a bit of a follow-up to what's been going on, in case you haven't heard all the hubba bubba happening here in these anime and manga suites, but in particular, the manga streaming services realm, because, yeah, it's been a little bit chaotic. Now, to catch you up to speed, essentially, over the last few days, Days, a couple of different manga streaming services have launched. Biz Media, the same people that put out the Shonen Jump app, have launched surprisingly their own service that, or I think it's a relaunch actually, a lot of people have been telling me, their own service that is not only from the Shonen Jump stuff, but you can get access to things like Case Clothes, Shogakugan titles in general, like Inuyasha. There's a large library of stuff, Junji Ito, horror manga that wasn't previously available on the Shonen Jump app that you could get get on this app for $1.99 which is separate from the Shonen Jump app that costs $2.99 currently but still for five bucks you have access to thousands upon thousands of chapters so I'm not going to be mad at it but the thing about it is is that because of the surprise launch it kind of seemingly already was going to steal the thunder of K-Manga. K-Manga is Kodansha's new app that they were launching with titles like Attack on Titan, Fairy Tale, Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Gachi Yakuza, like there's a large library of titles that Kodansha have that they were going to be launching with K-Manga so Viz coming with the surprise launch despite the fact that K-Manga has been revving up to launch for quite some time was already a massive thorn in their side but then it gets even worse because the big thing about K-Manga is opposed to Shonen Jump that is $2.99 or Viz Manga that's $1.99 with Viz Manga having currently over 10,000 chapters at your disposal for $1.99 a month K-Manga is going to be a point-based ticket-based system i didn't really break it down in the last one but yeah there's a lot more here at hand including massive massive censorship but let's read so we get a little bit of a better grasp of what the heck this thing is of this point ticket system because now we have a breakdown of it kodansha's new k manga app reveals tickets point system for accessing manga chapters kodansha launched its new manga distribution service k manga for android on wednesday the app is also slated to launch for iOS on Wednesday and is slated to launch for browsers within days. The company confirmed that it launched the app with approximately 400 titles including 60 Simulpub titles with their chapters debuting on K-Manga before other platforms. The first few chapters of most titles are available for free. So you get, you know, similar to what Shonen Jump does, you get to read like the latest two to three chapters for free. The company also revealed the service's ticket and point-based credit systems. The service will provide users with a free normal ticket once a day. Users can use normal tickets to read a single chapter of a single K-Manga original series per ticket. Users can get 3 to 4 premium tickets per day from login bonuses and special campaigns and can utilize both normal and premium tickets to read about 4 to 5 chapters of a title per day. Premium tickets have an expiration date. Note that although K-Manga's own infographics state that premium tickets allow users to read as many chapters of your favorite series as you want, Kodansha confirmed that using tickets to read 4 to 5 chapters per day is more accurate users can alternately purchase points with every hundred points costing one dollar the service also gives users points for reading the service's featured manga chapter of the day or for watching advertisements users can then use the points to purchase access to manga chapters the point based price of each chapter varies according to both titles and individual chapters of the manga k manga gave an example where older chapters might cost less points than newer chapters users can also choose to use their points to bulk purchase Purchase chapters of a series in order to receive a discount. Kodansha stated it will host a digital launch party for its K Manga service June 22nd, and Kodansha launched a video for the app and also released two videos that explain the service points and ticket system. And I'm gonna just be honest with you. Well, here's a little more. It says the service is launching exclusively in the United States, and launch titles on the platform include Eden Zero, big title, Blue Lock, big title, Rent the Girlfriend. There's a lot of people that like that, right? The Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, big title, and Don't Toro Me, Miss Nagatoro, 
big title. And again, Rent the Girlfriend. Again, I'm, I'm not familiar with it, but I know that a lot of people read it or read it. I thought it was over. But other catalog titles on the service include Seven Deadly Sins, Fire Force, Chihaya Furu. Kodansha stated that its editorial team is managing the service. Kodansha previously told Anime News Network regarding possible future availability outside the U.S. that because it has to clear a variety of requirements for each country, such as laws and regulations, it is starting services in the U.S. only. However, the company stated that it would like to expand to other countries. Kodansha stated it's full responsible for the service's production and distribution, although it added it shares information and discusses the services with Kodansha USA Publishing on a daily basis. Kodansha Publishing ended distribution of simulpub chapters of its manga titles on Kira Kira Mita Inc.'s digital manga service, Azuki, on January 16th. The company removed previous simulpub chapters from Azuki on January 31st. Early non simulpub chapters of some of the series removed, as well as several of Kodansha non simul pub series remain unaffected on the platform the company then removed a number of its manga titles from crunchyroll january 31st kodansha had issued a statement to crunchyroll saying that its suspension of simul pub updates was due to changes in its simul pub distribution program and flat out this is an absolute disaster this is an absolute disaster uh i think k manga just didn't read the room of why would anybody go with k manga i'm gonna just be honest with you like aside from the fact that maybe there's a lot of people that already read these series like again eden zero blue lock four nights of the apocalypse so maybe they might be tempted but in all reality for five dollars i could get access to both shonen jump and viz manga being able to read all of the battle series that i love and then on top of that read horror romance slice of life why would i go from five dollars a month for unlimited access to all of those titles and pay 69 cent to a dollar per chapter for whatever you have to offer i'm just not going to read your manga like and that's going to be the base idea for most people maybe it could be a very strong possibility that maybe k manga was looking more so towards the uninformed customers and maybe that's where they were going with it of the people that don't know the difference between like hey i could get this subscription-based service or i could pay this and maybe that's where they were going for or maybe they really had some ambitious mindset that they truly believe that anime and manga fans that have been notorious for pirating and not wanting to pay for stuff was going to suddenly have a change of heart and when they want to read 100 chapters they're going to fork over $100 to you guys not gonna happen and this was a massive mistake but then on top of that because it doesn't stop there i feel like this is even the the biggest and worst part of it all from what's been floating around i personally have not went into the app to find these things i went to the app but i didn't see the censorship but a lot of people have been floating around that k manga is censoring full-on pages with black boxes so if there's a page that they might find to be a little raunchy or risque they are censoring it which then further leads me to believe going back to one of my previous points is that they were trying to go not only maybe even after uninformed people but maybe even kids and like family friendly stuff people again that they're not in the manga scene at all they're just going to see advertisements of this thing launch it and be like oh snap i could read this full chapter for 69 cents and it's not going to break their pockets and they're not going to really care but the average consumer the average manga fan that they want to read you know sometimes they want to binge 150 chapters i don't know about 150 chapters but they want to binge a crap ton of chapters aren't going to go for this and they really have to play it smart if they plan to survive but i could totally see this go belly up within the next couple years at most and i'm giving it a couple years but i could see after year one them having to either completely change their motto and go a different direction more so again subscription based because even let's Let's keep it real three dollars four dollars five dollars maybe even six to seven bucks they would have gotten some people on board if they would have been up front like hey it's a very big licensing fee for us to do this it's costing a lot to start up we're not as big as shonen jump you know coming with some humbleness or whatnot i think a lot of people would have been respecting it and would have been like all right you know i'll pay the five bucks or six bucks a month it's it's breaking my pockets but i'll do it because i love you know the blue lock manga and i really want to be able to read non-stop of it so yeah I'll, I'll pay that but this ticket system it's just 
from the the looks of it at the very least it's not going to work if somehow they figure out a way to get around it then by golly good job but as it stands right now i have to really say that it's looking like k manga is d o a because nobody's gonna fly for 99 cents a chapter when i could pay five bucks for two services and get all the manga i want it's just it's beyond unrealistic but let me know what you guys think have you checked out k manga what are your thoughts on the censorship that hopefully my editor has shown on the screen of them putting straight up big black boxes on top of full-on pages are you yay nay about it does anybody at all because i haven't seen one person so far does anybody at all support k manga or do you think that again they're going for for the more uninformed manga fan that doesn't know the difference between Shonen Jump or even pirating manga or maybe they're going after kids that they are just getting into manga like what do you think is their whole angle here or were they just legitimately way off face and thinking that fans were going to pay a dollar a chapter and your overall thoughts and expectations moving forward for these things again this manga I think it was a little shady the way they launched it out of nowhere right before K manga but overall I think this manga and Shonen Jump are going to do just fine I think they're going to continue to be great i think the pricing is fantastic it's a steal in my opinion while k manga is like what are you doing honey what are you doing but i guess we'll see how things turn out moving forward next on the agenda let's talk some video games because apparently the nintendo switch records over 1 billion games sold as sales slow nintendo unveiled its full year ending march 2023 report to investors today revealing how much the japanese company has fared over most of 2022 and into the start of 2023. While most sales needles haven't moved much since the report in February 2023, which detailed the end of the third quarter in December 2022, one historic milestone was announced. The Nintendo Switch has sold over 1 billion units of software. Again, that's like video games and things of that nature. The first Nintendo console to do so, which is huge because the Wii, the Nintendo Wii was a massive seller of software. This also marks the second only console to ever pass 1 billion software sold for a total of 1.036 billion units sold following the ps2's mammoth 1.5 billion software sales i bet they want to pass that i bet they're going to try their best to stretch the switch to see if they could get past that ps2 point this mirrors the switch's place behind the ps2 and console sales as well with nintendo confirming that the switch now has sold 125.66 million units with a projection of another 15 million to be sold over the next year down from 17.97 million units sold over the the last year with the nintendo switch in its six years gross profits is down 6.4 percent to 885.4 billion yen again 6.55 billion dollars this is a lot of money on these tables from last year's 946 billion yen nintendo states that this is due to lower sales all around due to the chip shortage at the start of the fiscal year inflation worldwide and the age of the switch which switch has been around for what like Quite, quite a few years, I think, what, six, seven years? Nintendo believes that they will also see a downward trend from 1.601 trillion yen, $11.84 billion, in the fiscal year 2023 to 1.45 trillion yen in 2024 in net sales due to a likely stabilization of the yen, the continuing aging of the switch, and other reasons. It was noted in the report that these numbers were calculated based on no new hardware released in the next fiscal year. The Nintendo Switch, of course, went on sale March 3rd, 2017, a day after my birthday. And yeah, it's been around for over six years i think the nintendo switch i don't know how much more life it has in it to be honest with you like that that's a, for a gaming cycle that is a very long time to be around i mean how many other consoles are, what ps4 is already on ps5 xbox is on whatever the heck they're doing honestly they're way too convoluted for my liking but yeah at some given point i would like a beefier switch pause or <laughs> uh something in the realm of like you know a more powerful nintendo console so it might be that we might still be stuck with the switch for a while they might be really pushing that they want to surpass that ps2 with the 1.5 billion or you know the console sales as well like it might be in their goal to do that and they might be like yeah we're gonna <laughs> stretch this for as long as we can considering it's still selling it's still making the money why press up something new considering especially look at the ps5 and the other consoles they haven't really been flying off the shelves with people like oh my god they've mostly been in a shortage as well but shout out to the nintendo switch again i always thought from day one of it launching that it was a revolutionary console that it could be a handheld or a home console 
both in one. That is big, and that was one of the things that I personally feel like sold it. Like, Nintendo's been very good at selling, like, a novelty aspect, but with the Switch in particular, not only was the novelty dope, in and of itself, the library and the way it's been handled, it's been very good. Moving forward, we got a big update on Oshinoko. I'm sure you've heard of Oshinoko by now. It's <laughs> doing very big numbers for the anime, and the manga's been selling very well ever since the anime's release, but Oshinoko by Aka Akasaka and Yokoyari Mengo has reached 7 million copies in circulation with 11 volumes as stated in weekly Young Jump issue number 24 and of course the series is being published in Young Jump and Shonen Jump Plus's app which is really dope that they're putting Young Jump titles in Jump Plus I didn't kind of connect it to but 7 million with 11 volumes for a series in Young Jump that is very good and again I think a testament to the times man like back in the days when a series would sell that big it was a more like I guess like the imagery for example like looking at that image right there it kind of looks you know a little girly or whatnot back in the days you needed something that looked like terraform mars or something like a fist of the north star type of look in order to sell that well especially when you're doing like sane and stuff so the fact that it's selling like that is an indication of where the manga fandom is going and where the manga fandom is at right now in terms of like people are you could throw the argument maybe more accepting but also they're not looking for the classic and standard brawlic character or maybe they're not being fed that who knows because just because you're not seeing that imagery around doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't work it just might be that that's not what they're trying to go for because they might be like hey that's not a sign of the times right now but i fully have no doubts in my mind if i saw a fist of the north star terror from mars looking series that was really good and word was around that it was great i'm gonna go for it especially if it's weekly young jump it might be one of my favorite manga who the hell knows but shout out to oshinoko i really been saying i need to get into it and i really need to get into it next up an update now i kind of spoke on the bleach part of this before but i didn't know that that apparently Bleach and Burn the Witch will be revealing their latest information in the upcoming Crew B Inside special show scheduled to be delivered May 28th at Jump's YouTube channel. Again, I knew that there was going to be news on Bleach and I reported on that, but I didn't know that Kubo was going to be announcing some new stuff with Burn the Witch. I'm hoping that that's more manga chapters because, yeah, he kind of left us with a very strange release, right? It was like a seasonal thing and I think if he can make the hype kind of go up again and continue continuously do that it'll be dope but it's been what three years now oh my god yeah it's been i think three years since burn the witch i don't know how well that'll fare to be honest with you like you can go on hiatuses when you're hunt the hunter size you know what i'm saying like hunt the hunter yoshiro tagashi he can go on a hiatus people aren't gonna be like you know dropping it like that because he's already gained grace but with burn the witch considering it's only what a volume in and you're taking these giant leaps of hiatuses in between i don't know how it's going to fare upon its return i know i'm excited i know i'm looking forward to it but the masses that initially gave it a shot especially considering you have what the big movie or three episodes depending on how you watched it like it's been a very interesting experiment i would say the least with what kubo has been trying to do opposed to what everybody else is doing kubo has been trying to be revolutionary with it and i like it i ain't gonna lie i think that that's a really dope idea of allowing the manga cut to create at his leisure and we'll see what happens but i wouldn't be mad at both bleach and burn the witch dropping new chapters continuation of the hell you know no breath some hell and some more burn the witch why not? I mean, it's a little more than why not. It's like, please do, Kubo. We we would love to read it. Next up, One Piece fans. I'm not going to lie. Me personally, I'm a big concert fan. I love concerts. I love especially stuff like plays, stage plays, all of that stuff. And anything that is just kind of a little bit different. And apparently, One Piece is going to be delivering one hell of an experience. Because One Piece is orchestra concert to hold the first U.S. performances this July. Get ready for a celebration of all things One Piece music. Because the official One Piece orchestra is coming to the United States for the first time. The debut performance is set to take place at the Morton H. Meyerson Symphony in Dallas, Texas on July 5th, 2023, followed by a stop at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood, California, July 15th. With over 50 musicians performing on stage in front of a large projection screen showing off video footage from the One Piece anime, fans will get to soak in music from the thousand plus episode adaptation of Eiichiro Oda's manga in an appropriately grand fashion. The music in these particular performances will 
pick up at the end of the Dressrosa arc, covering key themes from Whole Cake Island and Wano along the way, as well as some of the most famous tracks from the series from We Are to Ogon to Odin, Katayoku no Taka, and more. There will also be special appearances by composer Kohei Tanaka and singer Hiroshi Kitadani, known for recent hit opening theme song Over the Top, as well as Stone Cold Classics We Are and We Go at the Los Angeles performance. Folks who purchase VIP tickets will even get a meet and greet opportunity with Kohei Tanaka. And I'll be honest with you, that just sounds really cool. Like something super out the box, totally different. I really wanted to go and visit when they had the Dragon Ball one. I never got the opportunity, but I would absolutely love to visit this One Piece symphony you know experience concert like that just sounds super cool super fun a whole bunch of one piece fans just screaming and singing along to our favorite joints like that would be amazing uh, amazing moving forward fans of baki baki the grappler well in particular the upcoming baki anime got something new coming for it baki hanma season two premieres this summer netflix announced details of the forthcoming second season of baki hanma the anime series based on keisuke itagaki's long-running martial arts manga series baki including a new trailer key visuals, additional voice cast members, and theme song performers. As an original series for Netflix, the 12-episode first season Baki Hama streamed worldwide in September 2021. The second season's first arc, The Tale of Pickle and The Pickle War Saga, will stream starting July 26, with the second arc, The Father vs. Son Saga, following on August 24th. And I'm wondering, for starters, regarding the dub, because I know there was a big discrepancy, if I'm not mistaken, between the dub that was released on Blu-ray and Netflix's dub. I'm assuming Netflix is going to continue with the same dubbing cast that they had from the first season. And I'm also wondering, when is Netflix going to get the original Baki? It is really just jarring to for me personally because I remember I tried to watch the uh, Baki season one, so to speak, that they have on there but there's a whole Baki the Grappler anime that is missing and I don't even know if there's anything in between that as well but yeah, I would love to have the original Baki anime and then be able to jump from that to these seasons. I don't know if it's a licensing thing, maybe they're asking too much maybe netflix is being like cheapskates about it i don't know what it is but yeah i would love to be able to watch all the baki in one go I'm, I'm i'm just saying and also there's this promotional image there's a trailer for this bad boy it looks mighty good and you know considering if you've been watching the full episode you know i was just talking about wanting to see more you know brawlic characters and look at netflix coming with baki showing that yes people brawlic big you know that uh fist of the north star look that can still exist in 2023 and be successful let's go baki i full-on support it and Speaking of the classics, apparently Rohan a Lover, aka it's a spinoff from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, the live action film shares behind the scenes video digest. Later this month, Kishibe Rohan takes his talents to Paris and Rohan a Lover, the latest adaptation from the pages of Thus Spoke Kishibe Rohan, has shared a minute long behind the scenes video. The video follows Issei Takahashi reprising his role as Rohan and the rest of the cast on location in Paris. Oh my god, this sounds so fun. I go like like these again these are just different experiences like i would love to watch this uh, is there a part one to the, the movie like I, if there is i need to watch it because i absolutely love the rohan anime that shit is so freaking good like this manga ka that is just with you know these stand abilities and shit like that is freaking awesome yeah let's see rohan Oliver is one of the episodes in dust Bowl, kishibe rohan a spinoff of araki's long-running jojo's bizarre adventure series and the protagonist rohan kishibe is one of the main characters in jojo's fourth installment diamond is unbreakable is live action tv drama drama series starring Issei Takahashi as Rohan has been aired on NHK General TV for three seasons since 2020. Yeah, I need to hop into that sometime because the anime was just so good. The feature film sequel is set to be released in Japan May 26, 2023. Yeah, this is dope. The shooting of the film lasted six months from the fall of 2022 to March 2023 and took place on locations in Japan, including Rohan Kishibe's residence and in Paris, France at the Pont des Arts, the Avenue des Champs, Elsa, the Art that tri- what the hell okay i'm not gonna announce you, you you read it on the screen pretty cool stuff then continuing on we have a really dope story or just in general a little graph to show you that yeah looks aren't everything at the very least even in the manga scene because sakamoto days is a manga where the main character at the very least looks i know realistically his age is like early 20s but he looks like just some really out of shape like 50 60 year old dude but yeah he's not and it shows that 
fans don't really care about that because apparently his manga sales have been going through the roof. Thanks to Joe's underscore Kez says, Sakamoto Day's infographic manga volume sales evolution. We're back with the charts and what a better way to start than with new hit from Shonen Jump. After Marshall, this one should be the next to get an anime series. Shueisha do not let that rising curve stop. And you see the sales from volume one starts off with, what is that about like maybe 16,000, 17,000 all the way up to with the latest volume, volume 11. 11 is doing about what 110,000 maybe is like massive with a total of 2.8 million in circulation and i really like that again that it's allowing like look at look at the main character Obi, you know what i'm saying he's like old and it, it's a, a big hit really dope stuff and it was recommended by Gega Akutami author of Jujutsu Kaisen and Hiromu Arakawa author of Full Metal Alchemist and it was nominated for awards like this is a very big feat of a series to be able to accomplish a lot of that and from what i read cuz i read i think about like 30 chapters of it it's pretty freaking good and since we're talking about pretty freaking good demon slayer season three aka the swordsmith village arc because yeah demon slayer is doing big things with the ratings big 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 things demon slayer season three ratings continue to dominate in japan demon slayer season three is now working its way through the intense fights of the swordsmith village arc from koyoharu gotoge's original demon slayer kimetsu no yaibo manga series and the demon slayer anime is continuing to dominate ratings with each new episode in japan demon slayer season three has been the most popular season in the anime to fate as fans have been anxious to see what would happen after everything that went down in the entertainment district arc in demon slayer season 2 and it's showing is just how many fans are flocking to each new broadcast of the anime series while the worldwide streaming numbers have yet to be revealed demon slayer season 3 a good indicator of how much of an impact it's been having are its tv broadcast ratings in japan the latest episode in particular had an estimated rating of 6.4 percent of the population in the kanto region watching the premiere on sunday april 23rd it might not seem like much but demon slayer beat out show like detective conan one piece in the process which that that that's major okay if you're beating out one piece and case closed the two juggernauts that never end you're in very very good well i don't even want to say company because you're above them like just <laughs> kudos to it i'm a couple episodes behind i'm about to have a fantastic marathon when i do catch up when i ever finish watching this marvel movie journey i've been on i'm on phase two right now loving it yeah big shout out to demon sayer you photoable doing it again moving forward fans of alita in particular you know the battle angel movie that was a massive success i want to say it was a massive success it was made by the same dude that did titanic and avatar well apparently the director has confirmed sequel talks are happening and a lot of fans from what i remember have been basically giving up hope on this thing ever getting a sequel a lot of people were like oh it must have not done as well as they hope for even though again it made what 300 something million dollars it was madness but it says here a little battle angel director confirmed sequel talks are happening a little battle angel one of the best received anime and manga adaptations of the last few years it was really freaking good and director robert rodriguez recently confirmed that talks of a potential a little battle angel 2 are on the way but it could take a while to actually move forward due to the producer's work on the massive avatar franchise a little battle angels first hit theaters in 2019 after many years of development and ultimately robert Robert Rodriguez was chosen as the director, bringing it to life with producer James Cameron and John Landon attached from the beginning. It was a massive success with fans of the Battle Angel manga, so there have been tons of requests for a follow-up with 20th with 20th Century Fox ultimately being acquired by Disney, hopes for the Alita Battle Angel seemed far off, but producers John Landon and James Cameron have both noted their desires to actually follow up the film with an official sequel. Speaking with Total Film and Games Radar recently about his upcoming film Hypnotic, Robert Rodriguez actually confirmed that talks about an Alita Battle Angel sequel are happening, but nothing has been set in stone yet. They asked, will there be an Alita Battle Angel 2? Yeah, we have been talking about it, so we would love to make one, Rodriguez stated, before noting that there hasn't been anything concrete from these talks just yet due to Cameron and Landon's works with the massive Avatar film franchise. We haven't said it for sure yet, but we're definitely hoping to and talking about it a lot. They're slammed with all the Avatar stuff, but they've definitely been engaging in it. But it's certainly a promising update for a potential sequel. And yeah, Alita was one of the better received live actions. I mean, it was somewhat pseudo live action, I guess you would say, because it's not quite live action where at the very least the main character isn't she like a 3d model composite mixed with like a human so you know you could throw the argument on that aspect but nevertheless it was a really dope film and it would be great to get a sequel i mean considering we got all these other live actions i've been bombing left and right 
Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> and, you know, we got One Piece live action in the works and Yu Yu Hakusho live action. I forgot about that one. Netflix trying to slide that under the radar. Like, don't remember that. Yeah, it would be nice to get one that we know for sure the first one was good. But, yeah, it'll take some time because if they're working on, you know, Avatar and they haven't even started concrete plans yet, we probably could see <laughs> maybe in another seven years, if that. Long time to wait for it, but, yeah. Then Dragon Ball fans, I thought this was pretty dope. Despite the fact that I am very much so not a fan of 2023 still getting DLC for Dragon Ball Xenoverse, but one of the things that I was like, okay, this is actually noteworthy to even bring up here on Forever News was that they actually did something, in my opinion, personally even better than what Dragon Ball Hero, the film, did. Because Dragon Ball teases Dream Gohan and Piccolo team up. Dragon Ball Super Hero broke the mold for Dragon Ball franchise as Gohan and Piccolo took the main center stage over Goku and Vegeta, but it turns out Dragon Ball found another avenue to give fans the real dream team up moment between Gohan and Piccolo that fans didn't get to see in the movie. Dragon Ball Super Superhero was the first new entry in the Dragon Ball anime franchise in four long years. Uh, Dragon Ball Superhero will have Gohan and Piccolo in the spotlight as they took on some powerful new androids without Goku and Vegeta's help, and as a result, fans got to see them unlock some new godlike transformations. But one of the moments the movie was missing was a scene where both Gohan and Piccolo got to combine all of their new abilities into a powerful team up attack. But Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 has gone the extra mile and delivered this cool dream team up moment with one of its newest cutscenes. And it's basically Orange Piccolo and Gohan Beast doing the Makanko Sapo together. And I'll be honest with you, that would have been a much better and more suited finale for the Dragon Ball Hero film than what we ultimately got. Like, the, the finale was dope, you know, Beast Gohan doing his thing, but considering the whole film's idea was about family, 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 you know, Piccolo being like an uncle or grandfather to Pan, Piccolo trying to get basically like his son back in the ring with Gohan, all of this was family. And this moment right here, I will say that Xenoverse outdid anything in terms of like that finale of the moment than the film which is crazy to say and shout outs to xenoverse all these years later doing one thing even though personally we should be on like xenoverse 5 or something but that's a different story either way that looks freaking awesome sick as hell and yeah if they decide to you know with the manga make some changes do that like toyotaro if you're taking notes that should be the ending of the cell arc or you know the cell movie stuff the dragon ball superhero stuff they should both team up double makanko sapo and wipe cell out permanently cell max i I rock with this so heavy. Like, this was really, really cool. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2's newest update adds Gohan Beast and Orange Piccolo to the game alongside a new story mission that adapts some of the materials from Dragon Ball Super Superhero. But rather than taking direct inspiration from the movie for its story, it instead uses it to tell its own original story and thus leads to this dream team up moment where Gohan Beast and Orange Piccolo use their special beam cannons at the same time for a single attack. Dragon Ball Superhero will have the chance to retell the events of this fight with a special adaptation now in the works with the Dragon Ball super manga but yeah maybe if they do something like this and they make i don't know perfect cell max that would be fire but that remains to be seen we'll see and if it happens i will definitely probably cover it on my other channel for neverworld but yeah okay toyotaro take notes moving forward now a prominent voice actor that in particular he's on the martial anime that is currently ongoing right now uh recently is having to have some vocal cord surgery and it's making me question well what's going to happen with some of his roles because talent management agency stay luck announced on wednesday that voice actor kaito ishikawa will undergo vocal cord pulp removal surgery at the end of may and will subsequently go on hiatus for about a month after to recover stay luck further explained that ishikawa's vocal pulps had been worsening since last year and a doctor eventually recommended he have surgery. Ishikawa currently has no cancellation of previously scheduled events. Ishikawa is voicing characters for some currently airing and or upcoming anime such as Muscle Magic and Muscles, Lance Crown, which hopefully he's able to get his roles in. Whatever he has coming up, they'd be like, okay, come in, record it now, let's get it done, and then we'll figure out from there because if not, then what's gonna happen like this is a pretty big deal this is shonen jump's latest manga or battle series to get an adaptation and yeah lance is a pretty big deal from what i remember from the 70 chapters i read of the manga and regardless you know speedy recovery of tim because you know he's a person first and foremost and not only that he has a bunch of roles here as well it says you know he's got the kingdoms of ruins quality assurance in another world uh rascal does not dream of a sister venturing out like he's got a lot of stuff going on so you know best wishes to him moving forward we got a little bit of jujutsu kaisen news apparently jujutsu kaisen season 2's kaigyoku 
Gyoku Setsu arc reveals theme song artists. The official website for Jujutsu Kaisen's anime revealed the artists for the opening and ending theme songs in the second season's Kai Gyoku Gyoketsu arc on Wednesday. Tatsuya Kitani performs the opening theme song, Ao no Sumika, and Soshi Saikyama performs the ending theme song, Akari, aka Lantern. Both singles will debut on July 19th. In addition, the Jujutsu Kaisen segment of the Mappa Stage 2023 event will preview a part of the opening theme song on May 21st so we might get a sneak peek of the opening before it actually comes out in July and of course the season will premiere on July 6th on MBS and TBS and 28 affiliated channels aka probably Crunchyroll you'll be able to watch it because yeah you know if you're gonna go the Luffy route you know what I'm saying but yeah um new opening okay I'm I'm very interested to hear these things considering like it looks like with that promotional art that they've been pushing around of Gojo and Ghetto it's gonna feel a little bit more bright a little bit more robust so to speak so I'm interested to see where they're gonna go with this opening and in general getting a sneak peek at the MAPPA stage which I'm looking forward to that MAPPA stage moving forward apparently Netflix is going to be streaming the new Pokemon Ultimate Journeys anime episodes on June 23rd because yeah even though it's been like already what six months since we got the big announcement like yo ash finally won a tournament and he's getting removed from his anime because he did uh yeah they never actually made it officially over here uh, the pokemon company international announced on wednesday that the third batch of episodes for pokemon ultimate journeys the series the pokemon anime's 25th season will begin streaming on netflix on june 23rd following the conclusion of the anime the collection of episodes commemorating ash and pikachu's adventures will become available the company streamed a trailer which um, yo yeah he, he catches a massive dub here personally i am probably going to watch these episodes just being honest with you guys like this is actually something you know the grandiose finale of ash and pikachu's journey this is the first time that ash really takes the big win of one of these big old tournaments so i'm here for it but ultimately yeah the, sometimes these companies i'd be like yeah so far behind like why is it this far behind the japanese when like yo if it maybe would have been a week or two after the japanese or dare i say it like like every other anime same day everybody would have ran and watched it but i mean i guess a lot of the times like similar to the k manga story earlier in this episode which if you ain't check it out you should um they'd probably be looking at people that are just not tapped in on what's really going on and just you know very very occasional fans that once in a blue moon watch and read some of this stuff because otherwise it's like why wait so damn long now a lot of people are very much so excited about the return of the bleach thousand year blood war anime and just in general more information on bleach it's been a little bit since we last had that big chapter no breath from hell that taite kubo released which takes place after the end of the bleach manga and then of course right now we're waiting for the return of the thousand year blood war with part two of the anime and apparently kubo is going to be having something to say here very soon it says here taite kubo to reveal new bleach information on may 28th it's been a few months since the bleach thousand year blood war tv anime left the airwaves and yet the thirst for more bleach is as high as ever creator taite kubo is here though to quench your thirst by revealing more information on the next part of the series on the first crew be inside program on may 28th the first crew be inside will be hosted by chiaki matsuzawa with taite kubo's bleach thousand year blood war anime director tomohisa taguchi an editor from weekly shonen jump and voice actors masakazu morita aka ichigo and noriaki sugiyama aka ishida in attendance so this is going to be a pretty big deal and i'm imagining of course this is going to be able to promote the thousand year blood war maybe kubo is going to give some insight on things that we didn't know and maybe what to expect in terms of some possible changes from the manga to the anime i'm also hoping that maybe there's a little bit of insight on what he got coming next for the manga considering we're still waiting for the next continuation of the chapters and i'm hoping that considering the anime starts in july maybe this is going to coincide with a bleach manga chapter return i'm just saying that one can hope right then a quick update in terms of real world things regarding president biden and student loans because y'all know one of his big campaign promises was that he was going to clear student loan debt for several people and it never actually went into fruition it was a back and forth i think he ended up taking a little bit off he didn't really do exactly what he had said well apparently as re-elections are approaching president biden's administration says that 55 billion dollars in student loan forgiveness have been approved and many more 
more will be coming. So opposed to just doing it outright, he's trying to, you know, lean that, you know, dangle that carrot, so to speak, for the next re-elections and say, hey, yo, I did 55 billion. We're going to be doing a lot more, which at the end of the day, that was supposed to be already, you know, done. Like you had this whole big promise. And then after you got elected, it was like, wait, no, hold on. Uh, no, you like, we'll see what happens, dog. You really want to get that re-election popping without actually, I don't know, debating like historically the presidents have done just a thought there just a thought and hopefully this does go in because there's a lot of people that really could use that right now a lot of people got student loans debts and all sorts of stuff that they need taken care of so yeah biden get up and do it let me know if you got any student loan debt and this actually went through and cleared out some of that money for you moving forward very big story regarding netflix in particular in case you don't know there's a massive writer strike going on right now loads of tv shows late night talk shows all sorts of stuff are basically right now on hiatus because of the writer strike which is very similar to the writer strike that went down in 2008 where a lot of writers were like yo dog no, we're not getting paid enough well this time around not only i believe it's a disagreement regarding payments and royalties and stuff like that but also one of the big debates and one of the big arguments they're having things like chat gpt and a lot of ai are capable of creating scripts and a lot of people in hollywood are like yo that's going to be you know causing an issue we don't want that involved in our contracts we don't want that involved in general in the industry so the writer's strike now more than ever is at a very big and important and possibly you could throw the argument historical point because if a AI becomes a massive staple in writing and whatnot, then it's going to cause a lot of writers to lose their jobs because really all you would need at that point is basically an AI and a few people to correct it and voila, you got scripts for days. It says here, Netflix contract sparks ire over voice acting amid WGA strike and AI debates. Hollywood is in trouble if you haven't heard yet. The entire film industry in the US is on shaky legs right now following concerning talks of AI and entertainment pressure in Hollywood erupted last week as the Writers Guild of America went on strike. Everything from film to TV and beyond is now in flux as major studios across the US have yet to find common ground with the WGA executives and now Netflix has sparked anger online as one of its controversial contracts has surfaced. The update comes from the New York Times as the publication dove deep into the ongoing war in Hollywood. Some of the biggest studios in America have resisted demands from the WGA regarding fair pay in the streaming era but issues have come down with advancing tech. To be specific, AI issues were brought up in this year's WGA negotiations and the New York Times says a contract by Netflix shows how real the threat of tech can be for voice actors according to the wga the group is adamant that no literary material produced by members can be touched by chat bots like chat gpt or other ai tools the group is also demanding studios not use ai for generating source material that would then be adapted into scripts and the like in the new york times article a representative from sag optra union that represents actors in hollywood said ai is going beyond simple source material some members have flagged contracts that include clauses that give studios the right to use their voices to generate new performances. So what does that look like in Inc.? The New York Times shared a clause from a recent Netflix contract that gives the studio quote unquote free use of a simulation of a talent's voice. By all technologies and processes now known or hereafter developed throughout the universe and in perpetuity. Duncan Crabtree Island, the executive director of SAG AFTRA, says these clauses could snowball into obsoletes for actors just starting their careers. As you can imagine, these clauses are damning to whoever signs them regardless of their fame. This goes double for most voice actors who stay in animation and anime for work. There is a greater safety net for actors like Chris Pratt voicing Mario in animation versus lesser known actors in the public eye as technology advances tools like ai will shift the world in ways i don't want to say wonderful like this article but some boundaries must be set in place for creatives and now that netflix contract has surfaced public opinion is swirling amidst the ongoing wga strike and i'm gonna say that wholeheartedly that whole thing that they could basically replicate your voice and use it forever and ever in any galaxy in any universe in the milky way um no this is horrible that that's horrible right there flat out that is just taking advantage the, that contract i can't even believe my eyes reading that right now because that basically means that whoever has already signed that their voice is forever locked in like they don't ever need to be hired again as long as the person that owns that or the company that owns that you know chat gpt recreation or that ai recreation of their vocals that's it this type of language 
has been in contracts for many years now in terms of at the very least using people's stuff or owning people's stuff in perpetuity like the music industry has been using this for a long time of hey we own your masters forever and always <laughs> in perpetuity in any universe in any galaxy we own it all so that way if we ever you know do space travel or multi-dimensional stuff we own your stuff and now the writers guild and in particular this netflix contract is showing you that yeah this is extending to other avenues and other areas and it's just not right moving forward something big regarding one piece in particular the netflix live action y'all know over the last couple of weeks some rumors that turned out to be false were circulating regarding the one piece live action having some terrible testing again that was false seemingly everybody came out and cleared up that that was not true however uh, it seems as though oda himself hr oda creator of one piece came out and broke his silence regarding the whole situation in terms of the live action itself hr oda shares update on live action one piece series and confirms the episode count netflix shared an update for the hollywood live action series of Eichiro oda's one piece manga the update is a message from original creator oda who is also serving as an executive producer oda states that the show is still scheduled to debut in 2023 but it will not launch until he is satisfied he added that each and every entity involved is working in sync he also clarifies the series will have eight episodes as opposed to 10 episodes originally reported and it says here i've been working with tomorrow's studio this is all from Oda, by the way, and Netflix for quite some time now. Even though they understand each of the characters, we obviously come from very different cultures. So when it comes to entertainment, we have different codes, skill sets, and aims. Sometimes it can be frustrating for both sides. It felt like we're all trying to get on the same place, so how come we're not on the same wavelength? There was even a time when I thought, is a foreign production even possible? Now this might seem like it's coming out of nowhere, but we've been hard at work this entire time, and now each and every entity involved is working in sync we're finally here considering my expected lifespan i believe this is the last chance to bring one piece to the entire world if we're going to do it i want to be able to supervise things while i'm still active that's why i agreed to the live action adaptation of one piece back in 2016 since then netflix has committed enormous resources to the production it was announced that the show will launch in 2023 but they promised that we won't launch it until i'm satisfied the entire cast and crew spanning various countries are brimming with love for one piece they're burning with passion and i've reminded everyone involved that this should be fun we're in the final process right now of finishing all eight episodes we'll be setting sail very soon and that is interesting because i could have sworn it was initially announced as 10 episodes and that was eight so the two episodes get cut for budget reasons or what's up there but either way i feel like if this doesn't work out considering everything that oda has been saying like oda is really putting his neck on the line for this one oda is really much so adamant and saying that he's very involved even with this letter right here saying that we're all in sync if this bombs if this one is hated if this one doesn't get the recipe right then i think it's safe to say that for the most part we're along and, and too far as a way off of anime to live adaptations working because again if you got the original creator like this isn't dragon ball evolution where toriyama was supposedly on the set and then they reports came back that he wasn't on the set it was a hundred million dollar budget turns out it was only 30 million dollar budget like this isn't that so if everything is supposedly aligning, Oda is very happy seemingly with what's going on, the fact that they're not going to launch without Oda's blessing, then that means that this should ideally work. This should be the best live action adaptation of any anime or manga of all time. Will it be? Time will tell, but this is definitely something that is a major testament to if this doesn't work, then by golly, live action may just not be the thing for anime and manga, period, because you got unlimited resources, you got the original creator, you got everybody working in sync seemingly, you got a lot of things going for yourself let's see what happens though next up just a small update on something that i thought was pretty notable apparently the mixtape platform spinrilla has been ordered to shut down and pay 50 million dollars for copyright infringement now there's a few different mixtape spots i know of course datpiff.com which i thought was shut down but apparently people said that they haven't shut down and then spinrilla there's a lot of people that really don't know what mixtapes actually were back in the day but essentially a mixtape a hip-hop mixtape at the very least would be somebody rapping over 
other people's beats and then uploading it like that was as simple so like if Lil Wayne had I don't know the lollipop record and somebody hopped on and rapped over the instrumental to the lollipop record along with like 10 other different songs that they're rapping on other people's beats that would be a mixtape but nowadays because of the way things went and with streaming and whatnot they pretty much made the mixtape obsolete unless it's 100% original music so some websites like thatpiff.com and spinrilla are still operating on the old formula of people rapping on other people's beats and because of the copyright involved in that and copyright infringement yeah it's pretty much saying that there's damn near no room at this point online and in general for the mixtape formula unless you're gonna sell them hand to hand and risk that because we know what happened in dj drama many years ago when the feds raided his plates over mixtapes it looks like the original mixtape just doesn't have a home anymore because situations like this 50 million dollars i mean maybe you could throw the argument that spinrilla was getting money and a lot of mixtapes are basically for promotional use only and that's how they were trying to skate by but if spinrilla is getting millions of dollars off of this and has been then i guess r.i.p uh Spinrilla. And last but certainly not least, I thought that this was a very dope story to hear. Apparently, NFL star Jamal Williams hosts a Naruto charity auction with voice actress Miley Flanagan, which aka that's the English voice actress for Naruto. NFL star Jamal Williams, noted Naruto fan, will hold a charity auction for Naruto merchandise alongside Naruto Uzumaki, the English dub voice actress Miley Flanagan. The auction will take place through on May 9th at 8 p.m. EST on the whatnot live stream shopping platform the items up for auction will include signed funko pops action figures manga box sets headbands and custom sneakers sai kickstradamus amezkua one of the world's most influential sneaker customizers for athletes and celebrities designed two unique pairs of air force ones for williams williams commissioned two unique pairs of nike air force one sneakers one featured naruto zumaki and the other featured sasuke uchiha one pair will be auctioned during the live stream damn i wish i could get my hands on one of those i bet they look fly all proceeds will go towards the jamal williams foundation a new non-profit founded by williams to provide financial and community support to assist in youth development and help meet the needs of those facing food insecurities the live stream auction on whatnot marks the first fundraiser event for the foundation the stories and principles of naruto have been hugely influential for me both on and off the field naruto faced a lot of adversity and was able to move beyond that and become this powerful force of positivity and kindness jamal williams commented outside of naruto's impact on my own life i have so much love for naruto and the anime communities these are my people i'm excited to partner with whatnot and miley to celebrate and rally fans around the franchise all for a great cause because i'm passionate about it williams is an avid anime fan the head of his twitter profile features an image of gara from naruto and he recently tweeted about his ascent up to the mountain of one piece episodes in a viral clip january he introduced himself as the swag kazakage leader of the hill village of the den before the detroit lions game damn why did they have to go that hard now in case you don't know streaming wars in general even down to manga has become a pretty big and significant part of the world not only just you know different industries in terms of the tv and movies landscape but as well as again reading and literature and for the most part the only one in terms of manga that has been a prominent and successful one at the very least on the league side of things has been the shonen jump app the shonen jump app for the most part has been very successful since its launch back in i want to say it was the end of 2018 that has been a pretty successful thing it's only been up until i think like last year a dollar 99 now i think it's like 2.99 a month and you get like access to a wide variety of different manga from you know your favorites naruto one piece bleach all of the big goliaths jujutsu kaisen my hero academia black clover you get access to that however in terms of the library of manga that viz media has because they have a wide selection not just the shonen jump stuff they also have access to a bunch of shogakugan stuff they got inuyasha they got case clothes they got romance series they got junji ito's works they have a lot of different things that are not available on the shonen jump app so it's kind of always been like a well you can read shonen jump stuff on the app but in terms of if you want to get your hands on 
any of these other works, you got to go out and buy the physicals or, you know, get your little pirate hat on and go crazy. However, recently it was just announced by Viz Media themselves. I believe it was the president and owner of Viz Media. He came out and announced that they got a new app incoming that is actually, I believe, already launched as you're watching this that has a new selection of manga to read. But I'm going to explain to you in a bit how juicy and I would dare say shady this whole situation really gets but first let's read into what's happening here with this and then you'll understand what's really happening in the grand scheme of how this was a shysty move to say the least this media launches new manga subscription service with shogakugan shoujo beat titles and more what's better than offering one of the best deals in manga offering two shonen jump fans have been eating good for a while now with the free simul pub chapters and decade spanning catalog all on a cheap and accessible service from viz media so given its massive success the company took another pioneering step forward today with the surprise launch of a brand new app called viz manga keep in mind that again it was a surprise launch for only 199 usd per month manga fans are able to access so this one is a dollar cheaper than the shonen jump one this is how you know shonen jump started a dollar 99 now it's 2.99 but still great prices all around can't complain manga fans are able to access an initial library of 10 thousand chapters that notably include manga titles from shogaku on magazines such as case closed komi can't communicate uzumaki call of the night and the various works of rumiko takahashi with digital symbol pubs for the first time outside of japan as well as shoujo beat titles like nana and more and there's a video out now from biz media ceo ken sasaki with a message again regarding this whole situation biz manga uses the same system as shonen jump new chapters for free old chapters on a flat subscription but as a separate purchase from its predecessor the app is only available in north america at launch but the company states that they plan on expanding to other territories in the future and so far you're probably thinking well okay that's a great deal they're giving us you know access to all these manga where's the shady slash shysty part of this whole story Fenev, what's going on here well the thing about it is it's been drummed up already for several months now including using marketing tools such as opening up a new twitter account showcasing editorial departments Departments from Kodansha because Kodansha magazine has been gearing up for May 14th to release their manga subscription service. They've been marketing it. They've been promoting it. This is supposed to be a very big deal because this is going to give access to a lot of fans that previously didn't know where could I read the latest Attack on Titan? Where could I get my hands on the latest Eden Zero or Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest? Where can I read some old manga of Tokyo Revengers or any of the other stuff that I love from this? God Akuta, and they had big plans and they still do to release it within the next few days however viz media decided to launch this surprise app days before k manga was supposed to launch with their app and i'm not even gonna lie that was a very ruthless cutthroat move of viz media in this industry and the crazy part about it is is that nobody outside of people that are watching this which hopefully this gets a little spread so people can understand what's really happening will know that this actually went down this way for the most part they're gonna be thinking oh god another manga service which is definitely gonna put k manga at a disadvantage because the mainstream and the masses are gonna be like oh Oh, snap, there's a new manga service, but man, I already just got this Viz one, man. They have Rumiko Takahashi stuff. What's on here? Oh, damn, I don't know. Now people are going to be torn. Now people are going to be like, so I already got Shonen Jump, and I just got this Viz manga app. Why do I need K-Manga? I got enough manga over here right now. Strong-armed and Viz Media, I'm not going to lie. If y'all watching this right now, what a decision y'all made. A little beef brewing between manga companies. It is what it is. Competition is great, but the way this was done... A little bit on the shoisty side if I do say so. Okay people and I have a breaking update for this story as I've been editing this video. Apparently the K Manga app has officially announced but it's being told that essentially for a lot of people it is dead upon arrival because apparently opposed to going the subscription model route of just you know $1.99, $2.99 a month for unlimited manga. They are doing some strange point system where you get like free tickets but once you run out of the free tickets you gotta pay either 69 cents or 99 cents a chapter personally i'm not a big fan of this move this is definitely a very strange move considering their competitor is offering you know unlimited manga for about two bucks three bucks a month why would anybody go to your service and pay 99 cents 
per chapter. So if they want to read 100 chapters, they got to pay $100. I definitely think this is a big miss. This is going to be a missed opportunity in general to have a very good competitor. And it's very unfortunate that on top of the fact that Viz dropped this surprise subscription service days before K-Manga, now K-Manga also made a horrible decision of not going the subscription service route. And I don't think that this is going to fare well, but... You guys let me know. What do you think about this? Which one would you rather go with? Viz Media's Viz Manga and their Shonen Jump app or K Manga? I mean, for a fraction, a tiny fraction of the cost, you can get both Shonen Jump and Viz Manga for what? $5 a month opposed to $0.99, cents, $0.69 cents a chapter in this weird point system. Uh, yeah, Kodansha, I think you're going to have to remedy this ASAP. Next up on the agenda, apparently a major manga, or at the very least, a manga for from a major author is coming to an end and entering its quote-unquote final battle. Shinobu Otaka's Orient manga enters final battle. The June issue of Kodansha's Besatsu Shonen Magazine announced on Tuesday that Shinobu Otaka's Orient manga will start its final battle in the magazine's next issue on June 9th. Otaka launched the manga in Weekly Shonen Magazine May 2018. The manga moved to Kodansha's Besatsu Shonen Magazine in February 2021. Coincidentally, right after Attack on Titan ended, they thought Shinobu Otaka was about to, you know, plug the holes of that boat. That didn't work out. Kodansha published the manga's 18 volume on March 9th and if you don't know about the series briefly the new action manga from the creator of Magis here Musashi is a teenager living under demon rule as children he and his best friend made a promise to become the greatest warriors in the world and overthrow the demons but life intervenes and five years later he finds himself about to become a minor yet can Musashi truly be satisfied with a normal life and I'm going to tell you flat out unfortunately I have to say because I was one of the biggest Magi fans probably the biggest Magi Labyrinth the Magic fan out there i'm not broken up about this one ending in fact i'm actually excited about it ending not because shinobu otaka like you know isn't a great author or anything like that but first of all the anime adaptation was absolutely downright horrendous they didn't do a good job they didn't do it justice and from what i read with the first couple chapters of the manga it was actually pretty decent so once this bad boy wraps up i'm going to go back and read the whole thing and i'm really hoping that shinobu otaka either a goes back to shogakugan to work on another part for Magi or something bring back that Magi anime or B works on an entirely new work and gets another shot at this thing because Magi was fantastic didn't get his just dues this series it really didn't uh, live up to the expectations at the very least that I have for Shinobu Otaka and I know she's an incredible author and I want to see what she does next so yeah I'm not broken up about this one in fact I'm excited moving forward as you're watching this at the very least it's past Goku Day May 9th in case you don't know May 9th is Go Ku Go is 5 Ku is 9 and a lot of fans had expectations that they were going to announce something big because hello if there's a day named after Goku chances are you would want to utilize that to do some sort of marketing you know campaign or announcements or anything like that fans were very optimistic about this you know alleged rumored web anime that's been in the works for quite some time but at the very least in one regard there was a big announcement that was so disappointing because Toei Animation the company behind the Dragon Ball anime had teased that there was an unlisted article announcement for Dragon Ball and the big announcement was in honor of Goku Day May 9th they were giving away a special video game Dragon Ball Z Kakarot so yeah they were giving away a copy of a game that came out uh, what two years ago now like that that's the big announcement nothing to do with you know new animation a little one-shot manga would have been kind of cool another episode of Bardock you know no, no none of that oh oh yeah giving away a game that we could all go buy oh I guess it really was Piccolo day huh like Piccolo wins in the end shout outs to Piccolo and then last story on the docket in case you don't know the artist and I believe co-writer of the static shock current comics the revival of static nicholas j for ivy is one talented freaking artist so much so that he's uh just knocked down a few major doors in the worlds of creation i guess you would say i don't want to just limit it to like art and animation because these are big things that he is doing big milestones and he announced recently that he is working on a new original ip with kudo studios he's creating and they're producing he can't say yet but they're responsible for a few big projects 
Muppets, you know, Weathering with You, God Eater. Oh my God, God Eater's animation was incredible. Cold Vein, Sound and Fury, and Bravely Default 2 to name a few and he's basically saying that he's going to show y'all what a fusion a proper fusion of east and west really looks like and there's still more to come and i'm not gonna lie that's a massive massive feat not only that but then also he met up with shinichiro watanabe for something that they're working on as well i'd imagine and he's seen here a photograph with shinichiro watanabe giving a really awesome fist bump if you don't know about shinichiro watanabe he's the director of cowboy bebop samurai shampoo terror of resonance space dandy Carolyn Tuesday, Blade Runner 2022, and many more. So these are definitely some big feats, and I ain't gonna lie, I would love it if any of these projects at all. I mean, I know the Studio Kudo one is a newer IP, but if he's working on any static animation with Shinichiro Watanabe, that would be freaking fire. I'm, I, I'm just saying. I want to be very clear. I don't know anything. Nick hasn't told me a single peep on anything. He just said, "Yo, check out what I got going on right now," and I was like. Let's freaking go. Do your damn thing. Kick them doors open for us, bro. But I'll keep you guys posted on anything else that Nick has coming. And in general, if there's any static-related stuff in there. Because, yeah, in case you don't know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big Static Shock fan. I love it. Ah! Okay, people. And we're back with the author comments. We got Weekly Shonen Magazine and Weekly Shonen Jump author comments. So, let's go through these bad boys. Let's start off with Weekly Shonen Magazine. Because it feels like it's been 100 million years. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with Nakama Suzuki, Four Nights of the Apocalypse. I pre-ordered the Rambu Collector DVD set. I'm nostalgic for outlandish comedy and that theme song. I, I have no idea what is he talking about Rambo? Maybe maybe he's talking about Rambo, like you know, uh the Sylvester Stallone or something. No, no. <laughs> Hiromashima, author of Eden Zero. I've been hanging out and having meals with each and every game creator at the Game Creator Lab. It's fun talking about all kinds of video games. I, I wouldn't be surprised if after this Hiromashima decides to have less focus in on being a mangaka and more so being a game developer. It seems like his heart and his passion really resides within game development, especially over the last few years. You know, him creating his own little Eden Zero game and stuff like that. Now he's working on another original title. I wouldn't be surprised if Hidomashima maybe has like a quaint relic of a manga to go aside with a video game or uses a manga as more so the launching pad for a video game. But yeah, he really has been into video game creation lately and kudos to him following his heart. Yusuke Nomura, author of Blue Lock, those suffering from May sickness can get in touch with me and I'll teach you how to make life fun again. Offer limited to women. <laughs> Oh, snap. Yusuke Nomura and T, uh, the editor of Blue Lock. Y'all both hilarious. Y'all love the ladies. I respect it. Hells yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we got Negi Haruba, author of Ranger Reject. Right before I head to bed, I can hear something rupture. Apparently, no one else can hear this. That's bad, right? Maybe it's your stomach, mate. Maybe you ate something a little bit too much. Maybe you ate something a little bit foul, you know? Then we got Kei Urana, author of Gachi Akuta. This is a secret I've kept from my editors, but I've been almost missing deadlines due to rewatching Walking dead and yeah like isn't walking dead it, it hit like a bunch of streaming services but that's terrible and your editors saw that now so now they're gonna be on top of you they're gonna be calling you day and night hey are you watching the walking dead turn that off right now we got george morikawa author of hajime no ippo both shibuya's hidden buddhist image and reiji were amazing Okay, no idea, but alrighty. Close off the Weekly Shonen Magazine, ones with Yoshitoki Oima, author of To Your Eternity. The Mont Bell I brought along with the train station is perfect. Is that like some sort of like toy set or something that they got? I don't know. Either way, shout outs to this. I'm so happy to have the Weekly Shonen Magazine author comments back because I really enjoy reading these. But let's mosey on over to the Weekly Shonen Jump author comments because it's been, a, I want to say, a week or two as well since we've had these bad boys. And we start off with the new manga, Do Retry by Jun Kirarazaka, Narita Sensei, Tamakuma Jim, Mr. Miyamoto, thank you all for helping me with this series. And yeah, the series looks really cool. I gotta read it. Uh, the Elusive Samurai is Yusei Matsui. Congratulations on your new series, Kirazaka-san. I'm so happy to have two former assistants with series and jump at the same time. I bet that's a good feeling. Martial Magic and Muscles is Hajime Komodo. I ate natto rice. I put green onion on it and it was delicious. If you say so, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Undead Alux Yoshifumi Tezuka. My assistant recommended adding protein to soy milk, and it's seriously good. All right. Yeah, okay. Relax, fam. Relax. Amir uh, Roboko Shuhei Miyazaki. I went to see the voices for the anime being recorded. Matsuo-san's passionate performances blew me away. So they're making more Miyamoto? 
Or is he referring to the older stuff? Hmm, maybe that's why he's heading to Netflix? Hmm, maybe they're gonna do a real anime? One may hope. <laughs> uh, we got One Piece creator, Eichiro Oda. Gatebox is evolving with chat GPT. Exciting. I'm supporting them with the sponsor plan. Yeah, uh, Oda, be careful. Be careful, Oda, with your health stuff and the fact that Jump loves money. They might replace you with chat GPT, fam. Or who knows? Maybe Oda's been using chat GPT recently. Yeah, you never know. Tenmaku Cinema's Yuto Sukuda. I think that's the artist. To everyone who sent chocolate to Food Wars characters and letters to the creators, thank you so much. Hey, you're supposed to be promoting Tenmaku Cinema, not Food Wars. Knock it off. <laughs> uh, we got Yuto Suzuki from Sakamoto Days. I'm hooked on the fried mushroom dish from Tis Time for Torture Princess. Well, that, that's one hell of a name for a series, huh? We got Tadatoshi Fujimaki, author of Kill Blue. Also, you may know them more from Kuroko no Basket. It's not like I was doing nothing all this time, but I'm already on the verge of death from starting a new series. Yeah, it'd be like that. That's why a lot of the ghosts don't return to do show to jump manga. It's crazy. Just reading that is very interesting, honestly, and it's a big forewarning because a lot of people be having dreams of being a Shonen Jump mangaka. Look, this is what it is. Homie did Kuroko no Basket, one of the biggest manga, sports manga of all time, and he returned to jump after a few years, and he's feeling like he's dying from starting a new one we got koya horikoshi from my hero academia i got knocked out from food poisoning my only thoughts are i'm gonna hurl and should i hurl well it's good to know that um it was just food poisoning even though food poisoning is very dangerous but it's good to know that he's back on his feet and the food poisoning hopefully has been you know done away with and uh yeah because horikoshi has been in a little bit of a mess over the last year and some change he had a lot of health issues and had to take a lot of sudden breaks and if it's indeed true that it's from food poisoning from the latest one then um speedy recoveries and all that stuff we we worry about these manga over here for never news okay and uh koi horikoshi been going through some stuff then we got blue boxes koji miura i'm spending my days finding and looking at delicious foods on twitter and then not going out for them <laughs> Oh, we got Akaneba Nashi's Yuki Suenaga. But there is passion. It's fun watching stuff you read in books or listen to on the radio. Love it. We got uh, Kento Shinohara from Witch Watch. The Nasuka figure I bought to put on an armored horse claw was totally the wrong size. Man, Nasuka the Valley of the Wind. A classic. Uh, we got the Ichinose Family Deadly Sins Taizan 5. It's really warmed up lately. Please enjoy chapter 23. Yes, we will, goat. Even though I'm like super behind at this point. I'm a hypocrite. Uh. Mission Yozakura family's Hitsuji Gondaira. The skating world without Kagon is too sad. The star of my generation. The god of the sit spin. Man, I've never been into skating. Maybe I should take a look at it sometime. Fabricate 100, Daisuke and Oshima. I'm a bit late, but volume 1 is on sale in Japan. Please check it out. Yeah, if you don't want to get canceled, you may, you know, you might want to tell people about it. You know, just saying. Cypher Academy. And I ain't gonna lie, these last few series, I just really don't know shit about. Like, Fab Fabricant 100, uh, Cypher Academy. These are series that I can see getting canceled because I, I, I don't even know anything about them and they're bottom by Nisi Oisin. Thanks to your support, I've been able to get the story this far. I hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, you better enjoy this jump manga because um, they could cancel your ass. You bottom at, of the barrel right now in terms of the rankings. Oh, what's going on here? But in all seriousness, uh, best wishes to all the manga and in general. Uh, those were the weekly Shonen Jump all the comments. Then people, let's wrap this bad boy up with the top 50 best-selling manga of the week, courtesy of... Joe's underscore K. Let's see. We got 50 through 41. And off rip is a whole bunch of manga I know nothing about. What is Nami Yokite Kure? Volume 10 did 8.9K, 20K in 10 days. And I'm going to lie, that cover looks all right. It looks all right. Uh, Berserk of Gluttony. I'm sorry. I won't be reading the rest of this because the only Berserk that we recognize and look at as Berserk is Kentaro Mira. So, no. We got at number 46, Blue Lock episode of Nagi, Volume 2 doing another 9.8k bringing his total to 179 cool stuff I i'm always shocked when i see this manga putting out a new volume cooking papa volume 165 and 10 days 17.6 with 10.2 this week what what is this series what where did it come from i <laughs> over like the last i don't know maybe six months i just started seeing it popping up out of nowhere where, where what let's go to places 40 through 31 a lot of just no name series i'll be honest with you it's a real big drought of release this week to say the least we got i think i've heard of tiger and dragon i don't know volume four in six days 11k i almost thought that was tomodachi game at number 37 but no that's just nichan no tomodachi tomodachi means friend so relax for now relax uh we got kubo san and Wa Boku, hey Kubo, like Taite Kubo. No. <laughs> 
Um, Futari Solo Camp, Volume 15. In 10 days, 27K. Uh, that cover looks pretty cool. Yeah. Again, a lot of unknown manga. Let's go to uh, 30 through 21. Now I'm starting to see some names that I'm a little more familiar with. Like We got at 29, One Piece, one of the biggest ones. Uh, volume 105 with 15.5K, a total of 1.7K or 1.7K. <laughs> 1.7 million. Sorry about that one. Uh, we got Blue Lock with Raichi on the cover again. Volume 20. 17k this week total of 406,000 uh th those are pretty freaking amazing sales man uh Oshino Ko volume 1 17.4k 513 again that anime dog you get an anime to pop it always reflects in the manga Jujutsu Kaisen's freaking volume from the the beginning of March March 3rd dog we're May 11th with another 19.4k bringing its total to 1.274 not far off from one piece is what 600,000 they both release around the same time I'm just saying uh, another Oshino Co volume at uh, number 21, volume 2, with 20K this week, bringing its total to 461. Then we got places 20 through 11. Yeah, a lot of Oshino Co I'm seeing. The Oshino Co anime effect is really hitting. We got Oshino Co volume 3, Oshino Co volume 9, uh, both doing about 20,000 a piece, more or less. We got Zatch Bell. I like seeing this one. Zatch Bell 2 in 17 days, 153,000 with 20.5K this week. And I still got to stress that i know this author homie what, what, what's author's name uh makoto raiku i know homie is there like oh i'm so happy i decided to do this i'm so happy because yeah his other series weren't doing well and him coming back with a part two to this classic series that spell is doing numbers uh oshino ko yet again volume eight at number 17 with 20.9 269 total yeah just a whole bunch of oshino ko jesus volume six volume 11 volume 7 volume 5 all of those doing about 21,000 more or less anywhere from 21 to 21.7 uh, and then Oshinoko again at number 11 with volume 10 doing 21.8 with a total of 211 yeah the marketing of that anime is just phenomenal but now we got top 10 top 10 top 10 top 10 at number 9 Oshinoko again volume 4 with 22.3 bringing his total to 406 we got, okay, some Kendaichi. Let's shake it up a little. Kendaichi, volume four. In 10 days, 46K. I've always wanted to get into Kendaichi. One day I will. Uh, we got Common Rider W, Futo Tantai. Interesting, a Common Rider manga. Volume 14, within three days, almost 30K, 29. That's pretty good. Uh, Chainsaw Man, volume 14, latest volume of Chainsaw Man. In 27 days, 425,000 with 31K this week. Big, big, big numbers. We got Detective Conan Volume 103 in 19 days, 347,000. That's so crazy. The, the 103rd volume and still doing numbers like that. Insane. Spy Family, though, a different breed. Uh, volume 11 this week doing 72K. Uh, cracking 1 million, doing 1,059,000 thus far in less than a month, 27 days. Fantastic. And number one, again, two weeks in a row, two, three weeks. I don't even know at this point. Uh, let's see, 13 days, Volume 6. 68 of kingdom 85k this week bringing its total to 433,000 no anime that people are hype about just straight up raw uh passion and great quality from my understanding and yeah that that cover looks pretty dope too kingdom at it again beating out spy family that's a big feat as well shout outs to kingdom in general like amazingness but yeah people that's all the stories we have for today's episode curious what you guys think most important story favorite story something i didn't cover and you're like yo why you ain't cover it we were definitely light on some of the other type of stories we mostly focus in on like anime manga video games and things like that but yeah next story will come back a little bit stronger this was more on the anime and manga realm this episode so laugh for this one i'm finna world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life bye have an awesome day peace and you guys just watched another episode of Forever News. have an awesome day subscribe and hit that bell to get more yeah yeah did you hit it did you hit the subscribe button yet yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a dream, alone in my room as I sit with the tea Couldn't possibly think what I often see And you don't even know how I often blink Lights be flashing and looking at me Such an odd, unique, yet I'm so unique And you're looking at me If the walls could talk, they would probably be bleak And I'd probably say, bitch, get the fuck off me